This video is going to show you how I converted this wet bar that for some alcoholic reason was right by the front door into this lovely little alcove with a bench, cubbies for shoes, and hooks for backpacks, coats, dog leashes, or cat leashes if you're into walking your cat, and I'll even show you how the painter totally messed up this project. I'm going to be using inch and a quarter walnut for the bench top that I will rough cut down to size, leaving it a little long so I can trim it down to its final length later. After that, I ran each piece of walnut through the joiner to give it a nice straight edge, and then ran through the table saw to square it up. Of course, I forgot to hit the record button when I did that part, so I am definitely off to a great start. Since the walnut was already the thickness that I wanted, I chose not to run them through my planer, which may have been a mistake. But regardless, with two straight and square edges, I was able to glue them and my arm together. Now, for the design of this top, my client did not want the top to look like a single piece of wood, so I intentionally picked walnut that had a pleasing pattern, but did not perfectly grain match. And after the glue was dry, I found that the boards had moved on me just a little bit. So I ended up using my belt sander to clean it up. And then I ran the slab through the table saw to its final width. And this time, I remembered to turn on the camera. Then I made my way over to the miter saw to trim off the excess on the ends and get my final length. Although my miter saw would not make the cut in one pass, I was able to just flip it over and finish the cut. Then, like a child, I drew all over the top before I began the monotonous activity of sanding. But I won't bore you with that, although I did get in a little sanding yoga. But before I finished the sanding, I did need to add a profile to the front edge. And for that, I used a 45 degree chamfer bit in my handheld router. Once that was done, the top was ready for its finish coat. Then it's time to make the face frame for our cubbies. And for that I am using 3 quarter inch poplar because the bottom of this bench is going to be painted. After cutting down the boards to length, I laid them out on the table. And since my client only wanted 4 cubbies, I simply found the center of the face frame. And then found the center of each half. And voila! Easy math. And then of course I made sure the cubbies were big enough to fit the bins that my client provided for me to use. Then I headed over to my pocket hole jig and drilled two pocket holes on each end of my center pieces. Then I can lay out the boards again and begin the assembly process. Using a clamp to hold everything in place so it wouldn't move around, I then verify the frame is square before screwing it together. Then just work myself down the line. Now with the face frame done we can move on to the main box for this project. For that I am using 3 quarter inch birch plywood that I'll cut down to size with my table saw, but first a word to the wise. Make sure you have enough space on the outfeed table to actually run the material through, otherwise you have to stop and move stuff out of the way, and then the foreman will bump the camera and everyone will see the junk that's hidden in the background. You get the point. So with the plywood finally cut to width, I can now cut them to length making my initial cut on the miter saw, and then I can make all of the divider boards using the table saw. Before leaving the shop for the day, I wanted to get the first coat of finish on the walnut. So using a foam brush, I began to apply the oil-based polyurethane clear satin finish. That's a mouthful. I chose not to use any stain because I wanted a more natural color for the final product, and this polyurethane really makes this walnut pop. And I will be applying three coats and lightly sanding with some 220 grit in between each coat. The next day I started marking out where the stretchers are going to be cut out of each of the dividers. I promise this is all going to make sense in just a minute. After setting up my poor man's stop block, I then made the first cut three inches deep in each divider. Then after adjusting my stop block for three quarters of an inch, I made the rest of the cuts to each of them. And to attach the two end panels, I drilled three pocket holes since they won't be seen. Then I marked out where the dividers were going and using my corner clamp to hold the divider in place, I then made sure everything was square and used some screws to hold it together. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other. For the middle, I also wanted to use screws, so I pre-drilled the holes with a countersink bit, 
and then ran in some screws. I then proceeded to rip down three strips of plywood to use as stretchers and cut them to length. Then I set the back and front one in place and secured the outside edges first. And then made sure the dividers were equally spaced and square before drilling and securing them with screws. Then installed the third stretcher and secured it the same way. Then I could cut out the back panel using some birch plywood and secured it using some one and a half inch staples around the outside edges. And after flipping the box, I drilled some more pocket holes to attach the face frame. And with the help of a few clamps to hold it in place, I installed the screws. After the face frame was installed, I could then install the filler strips with a little glue and some staples. This is what I will be using to attach the walnut top to the box later during the final installation. Then I can sand the face frame to get it ready for paint. And of course, because I had to see how it all looked together, I had to set the top on and put in one of the boxes. And I have to say that I am very happy with how it was turning out. Now it was time for the installation. And with the watchful eye of the foreman, I managed to get it in place. So I leveled it out and shimmed it along the back wall before attaching it with screws. And the foreman decided I wasn't working fast enough, so he pushed me out of the way and cut all the shims himself while I, quote, did nothing. After carefully setting the bench top in place, I secured it from underneath using screws. Then I had to figure out what height I wanted the back panels to be, so I made a mark and used a level to mark a line. Then I could install the back panels in two sections and secured them with brad nails. And I made sure to only put nails under where I will be putting battens later. On the side panels I was able to use just one piece for each side and the right went in with no obstacles. However, the left side, aside from the foreman's head and the butt crack in the background, I had to cut a hole for the light switches. And to get an accurate location, I just measured off of the wall to both the left and the right side of the box, and then measured down to the top and bottom of the box. Then I cut out the hole and installed the panel. And even though I was the one doing all of the work, apparently I wasn't skilled enough to install the switch cover. So I figured while he wasn't looking, I may as well go and route an eighth inch groove on the back of the trim boards that would overlap the paneling on the top and the sides. That way you won't see that ugly panel edge. I also made sure not to route all the way off the end so there wouldn't be a hole there. Once I was done with that, I began installing the trim starting on the back wall and using brad nails long enough to catch the studs in the wall to secure them. On the outside corners, I lined up both pieces of trim and then nailed them in place. When it came to cutting around the bench top, I first cut the length and set the board in place and marked where the bottom of the bench was. Then I marked the bottom edge of the chamfer and then placed the board under the bench top and marked the depth of the top. Then using a square, I connected the dots and cut it out using a jigsaw. But thankfully I realized that I put the chamfer in the wrong spot before I cut the board and I was able to make a correction. And then I used a little sandpaper wrapped around a wood block to clean up the end and give me some crisp lines. And then it was ready for installation. Now I did sand everything before installing any of the battens to make the painter's job easier. But I also ran all of the battens through the planer to remove an eighth inch to accommodate for the thickness of the back panels. This way the faces would all line up evenly. Aside from that, I'd have to say the installation went pretty fast. And after all the battens were all installed, I hit the faces with the orbital sander to ensure everything was nice and flat and to remove any sharp edges. Then it was finally ready for paint. But that's when everything went horribly wrong. The painters primed and painted over the walnut top. I couldn't believe when my client called and told me what they had done. So I went back the next day, but there was nothing I could do. The damage was done. I had to use a stripper to remove all of the finish and then use a good afterwash because you never know where it's been and some spirits to raise my spirits. Then I sanded it down to bare wood and applied three coats of polyurethane again like before. 
but at last it was finished and it looked good and my client was very happy with the end result. 